Welcome to IOMT. I'm your tutor Harry, and today we're going to talk about Frankenstein exercises. Um, so let's start with a story. Um, Scott Devine, Phil Mann, Rufus Philpott walking to OR. Okay, that's a story. Um, that's the three people that that the, these exercises really uh, came from, and it's just been a combination of things that they have released publicly or um, um, uh, spoke about uh, at clinics or whatnot that you can access free online. Um, first and foremost, the, the first one was Phil Mann's uh, Changes Exercises, where you play up an arpeggio and then you use any one of the uh, systemic tools to walk your way back to the chord you're changing to. Uh, uh, Phil Mann focuses on the 2-5 in, in the seminar that he did over it, so it, in the key of F you have G minor and C dominant. So go up to that G minor, all the way up, use the upper extensions, right? It's a Dorian, so G, flat third, fifth, uh, flat seventh, uh, two, which is nine, two, uh, eleven, uh, which is the fourth, and the thirteenth, which is the sixth. Uh, the extensions, none of them are flat, right? So Dorian. And then you're going down uh, C dominant via any mechanism. If you went down linearly, it could sound something like this. Now, I know that doesn't really fit. Uh, a measure or even two measures um, but th the idea is to have ideas to play to get you back down to your five your the root of your five chord um, your five chord right from your two chord That's one example, linear. Um, you could also go with broken intervals. You do fourths like I just did, or you could do thirds. Uh, so on and so forth. You could do an arpeggiated lump, which Phil kind of suggests not to do, uh, because you went up and it just seems um, unnecessary to repeat the process. You went up the arpeggio, why bother going back down? But for thoroughness, I think it's important to uh, note that that is absolutely an option, uh, and if it serves a song, even better. Right? So, Uh, learn different chord changes, you know, because uh, 
two five is not the only chord change that ever happens. You know, just in case you're wondering, uh, just like the two five, the five one follows the same fourth principle, right? So it's a uh, fourth movement in a three six. The only difference is the quality of the chord that you're playing. So the quality of the arpeggio, the quality of the linear line, the quality of the um, uh, broken intervals uh, will change with uh, uh, your chord selections. But uh, learning how to play over these changes uh, will help you become a more fluid player. Um, so that's the Phil Mann part of this. Now we have the Scott Devine part of this. Uh, a few months ago, he released publicly on YouTube, but with a workbook and everything, uh, 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 three things you can do to get shredded at bass. But, I mean, you could apply this stuff to guitar, too, if you wanted to. Um, and he goes into the three types of lines, which I just explained. Linear lines, you know, like... Now follow that diatonic linear format or chromatic format, um, arpeggiated lines, which we all know, and broken intervals. Right? Um, so, uh, uh, he goes into that, goes into uh, practicing it, how you can, um, um, giving you like a, a sheet music and, and, notate, and a tab notation to help you become more fluent with it over, I believe it's over C, so probably it all starts here on uh, the second string, on uh, the, the A string. So obviously they, they both go together because they literally are talking about the same concepts, except Phil Mann's exercise gives you context to uh, the the shredded content, so to speak. Now, where Rufus comes into play here, um, uh, Rufus just did a series of, of Instagram and YouTube videos uh, uh, remarking about uh, playing uh, intervals but changing their direction uh, and playing arpeggios but knowing how to play them from in in any direction from any finger. Uh, in order to access upper register stuff a little more fluently. Um, and both of these things uh, automatically apply, um, I think. Uh, changing direction of broken intervals, well that, that makes sense, you know. Um, but let's say you're doing thirds, you know, you go up. the difference. It's obviously a lot more melodic, um, so we can obviously see the lyrical content involved with changing direction on your broken intervals. Right? Uh, it just, it sounds nicer. It gives it a a little more life, it gives it a little more body than your So you can automatically see uh, the lyrical content that you can come up with by adding very simple change of direction Just going in one direction. While valid isn't the only way you can go. And if you only practice it that way, I'm going to tell you that's the trap you're going to fall into. Because uh, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm there with you. That's the trap I'm in. And I'm trying to work my way out of it. And this is how I'm working my way out of it, and um, while I'm working on it, you know, because I, everything is a work in progress. You can play music till the day you die and still learn stuff every day. Um, the the reality is 
is that um, when you notice that you're falling into a trap, you need to find a way to dig yourself out. And I was, I found a way. Rufus Philpott gave it to me. So, with that, um, the other part of the Rufus Philpott, addition to this, is learning how to do the arpeggios in every way that you can. Now, for this one, we're going to change to C. So, we're going to be a, uh, in a, the key of B flat. So think like autumn leaves. And we have our C minor and our F dominant, right? So C minor, how can we do C minor here uh, as, as an arpeggio? Well, um, let's start with the obvious first finger. Um, we're gonna go up first finger, flat third, flat seven, and then all natural upper extensions, 9, 11, 13, and then we're going down a, a dominant in thirds, let's say. Right? Uh, so, you know, the going down part is pretty much standard, right? So, um, that was our first finger on the C, on the arpeggio. So let's do our second finger position, right? And we're gonna start with our root on the middle, shift over to get the flat third, shift back up to get the uh, fifth, second finger on the flat seven, um, index finger on our nine, and then, our pinky here on the 11, you can shift up and go all the way up to the uh, 13, but let's just stick in the shape area, right? You know, so, so we're not going to shift up to a second, secondary area, we're going to stay here, right? So we're here. And then we're on the F. So we can do fourths. Right? Uh, we can do linear line. Right? So. there and then with our pinky finger we can also do an arpeggio right so C minor now you're kind of stuck there uh, and there's a reason why um, uh, utility wise it's using the pinky as the root the start of your arpeggio uh, on, in ascending scale is going to force your hand back this way so if you are looking to go back to a groove, this is a perfect vehicle. Um, and that being said, well then, what do we do with our F? Right, we have an F dominant following this. So, root, flat third, five, flat seven, nine, and now we're at the D. So you're, you're here at the D, uh, descending thirds. Direction, you know. Uh, uh, yeah. 
so there you go. There's now a, a monster exercise that comprises of three separate parts. So if you feel that you have like your core changes put together, your two fives, your four four, your four uh, fives, your three sixes, all of that stuff, if you feel you have all of that put together and you're looking to challenge yourself, well, um, there is the uh, linear way, the arpeggiated way, the uh, uh, broken interval way to challenge yourself. And then there's working around your intervals uh, uh, in opposing directions. Uh, and I don't even have it perfect yet. So there's that, um, and then you can work on changing the position of your 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 starting chord of the change. You know, um, you don't have to play if you're doing F G C. So if you're doing G two C C five, you could do it up here, right, for a little more lyrical content, or here. Or there, and you can go from underneath, you know. Um, you don't necessarily need to always be traveling down to up, up to down. Um, you know, this is just as valid. Gotta practice that, but you know that's just uh, that works just as well as a as a chord change because you're going from your C minor or your G minor rather to your C dominant, and then landing on the F major. How nice that sounds. Have fun with this uh, I, again. Um, challenge yourself. You know, go. Okay, well, uh, I'm not. I'm. I'm good at this, but am I good at it? Going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Am I good at it? Coming from uh, my pinky finger as opposed to just always coming from my first finger. Uh, and and really challenge the things that you take for granted because that's usually where a lot of our roadblocks come from when you go oh well I just don't feel like I'm progressing okay well can you play a minor arpeggio or a minor scale so can you give me a Dorian scale off your pinky finger can you do it can you do it off of your second finger which I'm sure everyone can Your first finger, I, I think so. I think everyone pretty much learns their minor scales um, the same way. Right. Um, you know. So you have to play with it, you have to uh, uh, figure out um, how you can do this, how, how uh, um, you can challenge yourself. Uh, because that's basically the, the beginning of this is that 
you have to challenge yourself in order to break through plateaus, in order to uh, um, see the fretboard in, in new ways and to create new and interesting music. So um, uh, I hope this was helpful. I hope uh, this has illuminated new pathways for uh, your musical adventure. Uh, remember, everything I do here on the bass, you can absolutely transfer this right over to guitar. Uh, if uh, you are a guitar player and you want to have something a little more, uh, uh, have physical assets, uh, handouts and whatnot, um, uh, tailored to that, I can I can create those for you. You just have to reach out to me. Um, bass is my my go-to instrument, so I I generally like to play this a lot more than everything else. Uh, but that being said, um, uh, if you are looking for uh, resources, uh, if you go to myilmt.com, you will find plenty of uh, uh, handouts, uh, diagrams, fretboard diagrams, uh, sheet music, music with, uh, with and without notation for bass, for guitar, for piano, um, uh, for utilization on, on those instruments uh, in order to uh, hone your skills or to give you ideas for practice exercises. Um, as far as the creative writing part of the curricula, that generally I like to try to do, I would like to try to do that on, in one-on-ones rather than on, uh, on the idea of uh, a mass lesson. I don't think um, creative writing really works. I mean, you can get the foundations and that's what we're doing with, with all these videos and these handouts. But when it comes to really finding your voice, you kind of, have to do that in a more personal manner. Um, this has been Indie Learning Music Tutor. I'm your tutor, Harry, uh, and thank you for coming by. Are you for real, bro? <sighs> Kitty interruptions. All right, anyway. So. Uh a good way to get yourself out of the, well, really, Bo? <laughs> it's a good way to get yourself out of the uh, rut of, oh, well, I want to, I want to.